Alrighty, alrighty. Hey, good morning. What's going on, Forex traders? It's Monday, October 2nd, 2018. Uh, happy October. Como tal vous? Namaste. So today we can go over the commitment of traders report if you want. We can go over the calendar. Uh, we can go over the dollar pairs. We can go over the yen pairs. There's a lot we can do in the next hour, hour and a half. So without further ado, let's get going. So, welcome to the Forex Today YouTube channel. Brought to you by Forex Today. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. My name is Wayne McDonald. I am the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. I'm here to uh, help you become a success sooner than later. Today I will try my best to teach you technical and fundamental analysis. I'm here to answer your questions, I'm here to go through charts. Go, uh, Just really, this is your hour of power. Take this 15 years of experience. And if we, if I can make it available to you for download, uh, I would. Uh, but anyways, if I earned your loyalty and respect today, uh, would you please show that by visiting TradersWay.com and opening an account, um, even a demo? Give us an opportunity to uh, for us to fall in love. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, gee whiz, always when I start, sorry, so what are we going to do today, well we got a lot, like I said, we can go through gold and oil, dollar pairs, yen pairs, we can go through the, uh, the calendar, all that kind of stuff. How am I today? Uh, I'm exhausted. Um, I spent uh, the weekend at Harvard. And then, uh, so that's totally exhausting, running around, running around, running around, running around, walking miles, miles, miles. <laughs> and then, uh, sure enough, in the middle of the night, I get a sugar low, so I have to wake up for an hour, go eat. So, So uh, what's on your mind? How can I help you? What currency pairs would you like me to cover? Or what topics would you like me to cover? How can I help? Well, you type that out, I want to remind you this Friday is non-farm payrolls. And it's my 150th month in a row of doing non-farm payrolls. John says, Cad Yen is rallying hard. Yeah, isn't it supposed to, John? So yeah, Cad Yen stuff, cool. Euro dollar setups, okay. Dollar Cad, lots of Cad, sure. Kenny's worried about Japanese taxes. Do senior citizens pay taxes? <laughs> you're all yen. Cool. Looking for a good sell point. Yeah, so you're still bearish on oil. Cool. So it's Joe. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, all right. That's that's a good start. Well, a lot of people are interested in CAD today, so why don't we do some CAD? 
We'll start there. That would be my pleasure. Okay. Okay, Ozzy Cat, I'm not sure if you're watching this one. And it's done the full Monty. It's opened out of position. It's hit targets. Yeah, this one is just crazy gone. Okay. Very, very nice. So, like, when I say open out of position, it opened very, very bearish, but even, you know, even too bearish for a bear. It was very difficult to catch. There's really, the way I kind of look at it is it really wasn't catchable. Right? You can't make the decision after the fact. If you sold in here, it was very sloppy and dangerous. Um, we're beyond entry pivots for, for bulls. We're in, um, we're in a counter trend trade scenario for uh, the weekly traders, which gets you back into this area, maybe, if you're going to counter trend. So a couple of people, I think it was John and Joe, said, well, how do you get into a CAD yen short? Well, this isn't CAD Yen, this is Aussie CAD, but this, if this came together and we had an Aussie CAD retracement uh, counter trend scenario back into uh, the central, and really, I'm not, it's not really the monthly central, it's actually this weekly central. But nonetheless, that's all about the same. Okay, so if, if this went up, CAD Yen would probably be heading down. We're not, we're not we're not sure, but that probably would be happening. Okay, let's take a look at USD CAD. It's the exact same scenario as Aussie CAD. The counter trend would set up this way. Um, the projected counter high would be, or well, not projected, anticipated would be about there and that would show CAD weakness. So once again, if you were a bear on CAD yen, that would show the possibility of it. Okay. Okay, let's do it this way. CAD Swissy, right? You know what, I'm gonna change this. By the way, look at these steps I created for you. Step, 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 very nice. Um, let's change the template on this just for con consistency. Okay. This is first level resistance. This is second level. Um, both are very dangerous places to buy, of course. So you couldn't decide to buy it now, right? So when I drew these steps, when I'm drawing these steps, those are the opportunities to be buying, right? Uh, this was a little hard to predict, but this was predictable, this was predictable, this was predictable. Buying it now, like, pfft, is funny. It's sad. It's ridiculous. So anyways, there's first level of resistance. So if you were looking to counter trend, that would be sort of okay. Um, this is really what you'd be looking for if you were a counter trend trader. Okay. This isn't quite at the same um, overbought as the other uh, CAD pairs were oversold. Coming in here. Okay. This doesn't have the monthly resistance. It only has the weekly. So for you guys that want to counter trend this down, it's a mediocre setup and you're relying really on those other pairs to turn this around. So Aussie CAD and was, what was it, CAD Swissy and stuff, they were better counter trend candidates, okay? But if they work to some degree, uh, this should work for you as well.
Uh, move your stop. Yeah. But it's one of these things like you. So the question here, um, I had trades running for a week or two up in pips and then news comes out and it destroys all your profits. So the news comes out and the market is surprised and pip and you lose hundreds and hundreds of pips. Or are you in trades for a week or two and you're only up 50 or 60 pips? Uh, you, the statement's a little bit confusing. I, I guess the comment here is you, you're either missing something fundamentally when the news comes out and you're not responding to it properly, or you're missing something technically and you're assuming the collapse is fundamental. But like, like I'm thinking about a week or two ago, uh, the pound collapsed and um, a lot of people said it was Theresa May's speech, but technically it was the, the, down to the exact pip where the entire market should get out. And then Theresa May was speaking at the same time. So I don't know, you might have interpreted that as, as a fundamental or as news. And you're like, oh man, the pound yen just dropped 250 pips in, in five hours. Yeah, but that was technical. So um, I'm not not sure if your interpretation is correct either. So I, I don't know. Uh, Kevin, I'm going to try to get that wrapped up today and have it available for you tomorrow, Kev. Okay. <clears throat> NAFTA agreement makes SCAD stronger? Yeah, you would think. Okay. Um, so that's that. Yeah, you, it, the counter trend on CAD yen is not nearly as good as it is on the other things, okay? Cash says, Wayne, do you think uh, CAD will rally more when North American traders come to the desk? Uh, only if they buy it. So you should be at your desk waiting. How do you join or get the swing trading videos? Well, you have to go to FX Bootcamp, purchase and complete the swing trading course. That's going to take you a lot of time and, and a decent amount of money. And then once you have that completed, you can join the group. I am Groot. You can join the swing trading Groot. That's also available at FX Bootcamp. It just won't let you join until you completed the course. All right. Mm-mm-mm. Nat Gas, Oscar Mike. You, you know, it's Nat Gas. I don't think I've ever actually traded. Um, and I remember when I first looked at the sucker eight years ago, maybe. Um, I was under the impression that at that time it was highly inversely correlated. And since I popped it up here when I created this uh, net, yeah, or this uh, energy complex uh, profile, um, it generally has not been inversely correlated. It's been positively correlated. Just really interesting. I wonder what's changed, or if, or if I'm remembering it incorrectly. But. Yeah, no worries, Andrew. FXBootCamp.com. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I think it takes you 16 hours, maybe, to complete the swing trading course. Yeah. 
Yeah. So in our group uh, claims, I haven't seen the, the track record, but claims uh, on the second week made 900 pips, and on his third week made another 900 pips. So he's up 2,000 pips for the month so far. So he seems to be pretty happy with the swing trading group. All right. Uh, Brent. See how they're just so nicely moving along. Now, Brent, I wanted to bring up because look at the pivot it's at. If you were a burr, that's your price, really, um, to sell it. I'm not saying it will. It's sort of it's just the the price. Um, if you were wanting price to head down here, that's what you're going to get. Um, if if it's going to head up, if it wants to head up, this can go quite a bit higher. Um, I am Groot. I'm trying to move this. There you go. This could go, let's say, to 87. We're only at 82 and a half. Okay. So it comes down to if you are bullish on oil, you're thinking up and and then some profit taking, right? Which is normal. And if you're a bear, you're thinking down. Okay. Uh, don't really know which one. I, I don't see this collapsing on us today. You know, if we're going to have sort of an inside week, let's say up to the, you know, up to here, and then it drop, and then we sort of end the week where we started. I think that's very, very likely. At some point, it's too expensive, right? At some point, oil is too expensive. Maybe that's it. It could be now. As I mentioned before, this is similar to Brent. This is the exact price if you were a bear, you want to sell. Okay. I mean, perfect. Doesn't mean a will. It just means that is exactly what you would like to, to happen. Now it may drop and then rise and then drop. Okay. But that is the, the price. You would have been praying all weekend to get this, whatever this is, 75.47. Sorry, 73. Yeah, 73.47 was the price you were, you were you were hoping for. And boy, did you get it. Brent is at the same level, too. Not not same price, same level, meaning at the exact place uh, you would want to sell it. Doesn't mean you have the technical setup, but it's the price. Remember, just because you're a price doesn't mean it's a sell. You also need to see the market reverse at that price. Do you think there would be a call for $100? Yeah, we talked about that, I think, two weeks ago. Okay. And I, I chuckled at it because there's so many more important things going on before $100 a barrel oil. So it was like someone that doesn't know what they're talking about wants to talk about hundred dollar barrel oil like I'm not saying that's not possible but not now and there's no technical or even fundamental reason for it unless you're talking so far in advance but then now you're philosophically talking about something that you can't back up so you know it's like talking uh, magic or something or you know uh, I, don't, I don't know it, it, it's weird it's just it's someone talking about nothing. Let's talk about 100 barrel oil. Why? I don't know. I sent a press release so I could get on CNBC. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it could happen. Not in October. So, if, you know, so, anyways. Not in October. John still got the hurricane stuff going on. All right. To me, John, it's just it's doing what it was doing before. But of course, that's always interpretation, right? I'm always going to see it my way, right or wrong. <clears throat> Here's your uh, our gold. I'm still not really interested in it. Okay. 
But, but, maybe it's a breakout. If this was the support and resistance you were trading earlier, remember how we had it drawn like this? We had a primary support and resistance, and then we had secondary support and resistance. What if you only had primary? Like, what if you were not trading this? Okay. And we had this this way. This would be your breakout trade, right? Remember, I said you could wait for it to finally break out. And then what do you do? Wait for the retracement and have it drop? Okay. So a bear would have gotten what they want. I'm still sort of disinterested. But that's that. Oops, I didn't get here. Where am I? How do we get there? Where's... Did I... What? Did I kill gold? Gold X A U. That was trippy. I don't even remember touching it. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll look at oil one more time, just to give you a sense. Like to me, oil is just doing what it's supposed to be doing. It never even challenged the technical analysis. Yes, the hurricane, yes, the blah, 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 blah. Um, but you notice, right, what do you do? What have I been teaching you a lot lately, a lot lately? Once you make your higher high, you look left, the old resistance becomes support, right? So to me, like nothing, nothing's changed ever. And, you know, so I don't see hurricanes and all the demand destruction and you know all this kind of stuff this is just technical analysis silver I, you know what Renko I apologize I don't trade silver I know I looked at that gas and I don't trade that gas but once again I didn't look at that gas for very long and now that the correlations broken down I don't know if I want to look at that gas um, so I apologize I, I, I don't feel right covering it but anyways I love oil. Oil's good. Mm -mm. Euro dollar. We're just where we were Friday. Nothing's changed. Right? So we had, let me try to get a smaller time frame here. Okay, one plan was we hit support, it would rally up and drop. Okay? Well, it rallied up and dropped. All right, cool. S Right, the other plans were buy or buy, and well, nothing's happened. So it just comes down to whether you're bullish or bearish. Um, one of the things we talked about this up and then down is if you were bear, this area where we were on Friday, you'd you'd be lacking a brain to be selling down there. So. Even if you're a bear, you would want it to rally up, and then you would sell it. And guess what? It rallied up so bears could sell it. Well, of course it did. We don't know if it's going to make a low or low, but I know no, there's no bear on the planet that would sell down here. But a lot of bears would sell up here, of course. That's why we drew that. <laughs> right? So um, I just don't know if there's enough bulls to overcome those bears. Now, bulls also want to buy it low, right? So there, we had plans, you know, like last week there was a buy, we had actually a buy zone here, a buy zone there, here a buy zone, there a buy zone. But anyways, um, if, you're, if you're a bull, uh, now's the time to be pretty serious. If you haven't already, I mean, all right, let's get into it. Let me zoom in now. I just want to show you that uh, bears had a sell here or the next sell is here okay that's what this is all about bulls want to buy it here either way and drive it up to here we just don't know if bears take over or or let us up right so now dive in with all that being said uh, if you were a bull um, where were you at the London Open And the, okay, so bulls are supposed to have been buying there. Look at, right, bears were 
on Friday is supposed to be short uh, up, uh, up in here. So now we're in nomad's land, and um, boy, I'd hate for you to be just making decisions now. Okay, so you might say, oh, well, Wayne, I want to buy a Fibonacci retracement. Yeah, well, you should have bought down here. Not Right, it's not trending, so why would you be using Fibonacci? Right, bears should be selling up high, so if someone's selling it now, once again, I'd say, well, why aren't you at the right price? Why are you in the middle? Why are you doing things now? You understand that's the difference between where some traders make money and some people's and some people lose money, right? It's because now they're making decisions. Well, you're not at the right price. The right price was here. The right price was here. You're like a day late, right? Cash, how are they unwinding it? So you read something somewhere, which is cool. How do they unwind it? Most of the Fed balance sheet unwinding is allowing their assets to mature, which means they just disappear. They don't they don't enter the market. Now, you might, so I, I'm not aware of the 19th. Again, I've, I've been in Harvard all weekend, so I haven't been doing my typical research and stuff. But if, you, if, you, if you've read the Fed has taken $19 billion and they're going to sell assets on the market, well, then you would expect, right, you would expect asset prices to fall and interest rates to rise. Okay. But would that affect the value of the US dollar? Only if foreigners have decided to buy this debt. And they need to buy some currency. Okay. But you know, let's put it into example though. So you're talking about you said the 19 billion today. Um Turkey, for example, was rolling over 70 billion. Turkey. So, like 19 billion from the United States, that's nothing. Okay. Okay. So, Cash says, I read that they're letting it, the debt roll off its balance sheet today, which means it just disappears. It'll have no effect because it just disappears and it just evaporates. They don't sell it to anybody. It just matures. It goes away. It doesn't exist anymore. So if they let it roll off, that's it. So the the asset expires and they decide not to buy another one. Okay, right? It rolls over, but they don't re-up. So like futures contracts do this where, you know, at the end of March, let's say, um, it, roll, it expires, but you can then buy the next month, right? That's what rollover is. So you're like, well, I'll take this oil and I'll roll it over, you know, from May to June, right? Or June to set or whatever it is, right? Um, right? So you, in that case, you sell the front month and you buy the back month and then that rolls over and now you got the front month and you know and you can trade the spread between the two and all this and i know a professional floor trader uh, that i visited in chicago and that's all he does is trade the spread between the months as they roll over but in this case what the fed fed's saying is they're it'll expire and that's that they're done they get their money Okay, but it shouldn't impact the market because that asset doesn't live in the market. It lives on the Fed's balance sheet, and then if it goes away, it goes away. The Fed will get some money, but they already have money, and they don't need money because they make money. So. so don't get all excited about the Fed roll, you know, rolling off, let it, letting stuff roll off the balance sheet. It means nothing happens. Um, okay, we, we did this one already. Uh, let's just go through all the yen pairs.
Look away. Yeah, by the way, uh, I don't know if you noticed. I got all the monitors running, actually. I just don't have any charts on these two screens. Uh, I think I'm going to put, like, news or something up here. But um, it's generally what it's going to look like. Um, to get a concept, it's 10 feet wide. <laughs> okay. Well, Kevin, remember, the Fed doesn't print money. The, the uh, media says it all the time. It's ridiculous. Who prints money? build these setups really messed a lot of them up lost some charts what's the flat oh that's just flashing LEDs I keep forgetting to take them down you know yeah they bother you huh uh, well if I have news Lewis um, it's um, it's because I like to see the heads talking. Um, I don't have any sound drivers on this computer. So if I have Bloomberg or CNBC up, uh, I like to see the faces because I spend so much time by myself in my office that it, it keeps me, you know, I, everyone's name is Wilson after a while, right? I ran out of volleyballs, so I'll put CNBC and, and, and Bloomberg on. Um, so it keeps me from getting lonely, but I actually can't hear them because I'm not interested in what they're going to say. Anyways, right? Yeah, uh, the, the Treasury prints money, not the Fed. The Fed doesn't have printing presses. The Fed manages open market operations. Okay, so if you don't understand what the Fed actually does, uh, you need to take the fundamentals course at FX Bootcamp. We go all the way through it, how they manage balance sheets, how they manage the money sp supply through the fractional reserve banking system. You actually learn the math. How do they raise interest rates and lower interest rates? It's not like they go, we, the Fed, say interest rates should go a quarter point higher. No, they enter the open market and do it. And so you can do the math and know how much, you know, how much they're changing the money supply. You know, the demand is this way, and right? The supply is vertical. Why is the supply, uh, the supply curve vertical and the demand is sloped? You know, you should know all this stuff. And if you don't, you need to take the fundamentals course. Anyways. Okay. Get a dog. I have a dog. She's a bitch. Anyways, um, uh, let's, uh, this is where we left off. Okay. So is it plausible if you were a bull that you could buy a dip on the head and have it come back? Right. If you bought, if it came down here, is it possible you could consider buying? Oh, yeah, I already drew that last week. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah. It just didn't fit because we didn't have, oops, we didn't have the charts yet. Oh, now I can't grab it. Anyways, there we go. So this is what we drew last week. So you can still see the that part there. Yeah, Kenneth, Kenneth Starr says uh, I'll be uh, saving money. That that makes sense.
John. Yeah, John, you got uh, banned. I can see what you said. YouTube banned you for your horrible language. So yeah, I was just being factual. You, you don't have to take it that far, John. Um, so anyways, price action, right? Oh, I remember what all these lines were. They're, they're your stop losses, remember? So, yeah, that's cool. There. I allowed your foul language, John. Okay, so that's interesting. Kiwi, let's go all the way to Kiwi. Here we are. Here we go. Okay. B -d 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 -d. If you're a burr, huh? That's the price you want. Isn't that cool? The cool thing about it is it's not here, 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 or here, 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 here. This is the actual price. And what we had talked about last week is, you know, the potential of setting up like a triple top. Now you got it. So I don't know if this is going to go up or down. Okay. Nor do you. Even if you think you do, you don't. Even if I think I do, I don't. But if you wanted to be a bear, if you wanted to sell it, this is the price in which you want to start considering to sell. That's the, it's actually a cluster of prices. I have 75.41 and 75.42 and a half or something. So we got it. You got permission. Okay. So somewhere in here, you should be short. Or if you're just making decisions now, you need to, you need to get on the clue train, right? And start creating some technical reasons to get short. So I don't know if you're going to go lower, low, lower, high or whatnot. Okay. So we don't know if this is going to go down. Kiwi Yen has been up for a very long time. Doesn't mean you have to be bullish. Okay? So if you wanted to get short, you need to get short soon, I would think. Okay? You put a stop above here. Or really what you're supposed to do, if you sold this, um, you know, last night, Okay. Uh, your stop is, holy smokes, here. Okay. I don't know if you want that. The other way you can play it, that's a monthly stop. I think what I would do is I would play it up here on the week, play it as a weekly into a monthly, which means you could also if you really wanted a tight stop, you could do this. So if you're going to play it weekly, what you're going to do is say, um, okay, you're okay with this being higher. You don't like it being higher. It's not ideal. You really want to keep it below this pivot, but that's pretty reasonable on a weekly basis. So now you you have a weekly trade plan to get short, which means your first target is actually going to be down to here. Okay. But anything above that you're out because well you don't want to you don't want it to test this and then you don't want it to test this. So your plan Bs and Cs could be sell here if the first one fails. So you sh you should be short now. If if the short here failed, then your next short would be up here and your third trade plan would be to sell up here. Plan A, plan B, plan C. Plan C is not a good plan, but it it can happen. Oh, thank you, Mohammed. This is the moment of truth for South Africa.
Yeah, I, I plan B is better, but plan A you're supposed to be in now. So it tells me a lot if you trade whatever the currency pair that was, if you seriously trade it, and you're open to being a bear, or let's say you are a bear and you trade that, and you didn't sell it, it tells me a whole lot. Right? It tells me either you don't know how to swing trade. It tells me maybe you don't plan your trades very well. It tells me um, you decided to hang out at the barbecue with your buddies last night instead of doing your job. All those are possible. Right? Not this one. Uh, whatever we were discovering. Uh, was it Kiwi yet? So, like, if you're sitting around and you're like, you told me last week, you're like, yeah, Wayne, I really want to get this triple top. I, I want to sell this. And and now we talk about it. I'm like, so, um, you know, what price did you get? And you're like, well, I still haven't sold it. it it's like... It's like a marching band walking through your living room and you didn't notice. But yet on Friday, you told me the marching band was coming. You just forgot about it. And you're like, oh, my God, there's a marching band. <laughs> or no, you didn't notice. That's right. So I don't know. Terrible analogy. But you ex on Friday, you told me about a marching band walking right through your living room. And then all of a sudden you're like, what's that noise? I'm like, well, it's that marching band in your living room you told me about. But anyways, I don't know. It's so stupid. Sorry. I need to work on my analogies. What marching band? <laughs> I mean, it, I still think it's funny. You're like, what marching band? The one in front of us right now. Uh, so I don't know. If you were going to sell it and you had a trade plan last week, I just don't can't fathom why you didn't sell it. All right. Uh, yeah, well, CAD Yen, the reason you're still working on that one, John. So John says, well, the CAD Yen. Uh, the reason why you're still working the CAD Yen is that there wasn't a swing. Okay, there wasn't a swing. You could have, you could have sold it Friday. Okay, but I don't recommend aggressively entering swing trades against the trend. Okay, I typically wouldn't do that. Typically, if I was to do something on a Friday and front run something like this orange line was us on Thursday talking about going long See that's that to me is a front run is here Okay, Friday Friday afternoon Friday at the close Yes, you could sell there you have permission. I Don't like it. I find it's too aggressive and you say oh well, it's next month's pivot. I don't care you're counter trading and you should right? Right? You're counter trading and you should not be aggressive for a counter trend trade. You you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get run over. Okay. Uh, you you should be aggressive with the trend, right? So like you can see like I mean after a while, right? After a while, guys, I'm gonna make you really, really good traders. Because after, now that I draw stuff like that, you're probably going, oi, they, right? Of course it's going to go up, but it's just price action. Uh, oh, and it was a weekly pivot. Oh, and it was a monthly pivot. And you're like, oh, right? But counter trend trading against that? No. But what you could do is, you know, do something like this, and maybe on Wednesday or Thursday, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Maybe Wednesday or Thursday you're buying which means you're, you're creating trade plans days in advance, right? Then that you could buy if you were a bull, which means you need this to collapse hard, okay? And, okay, oh, well, let's talk about now a true counter trend. Aha, let's do that. A true counter trend, and I guess this is what uh, uh, 
uh, John and Joe were talking about. You have permission in this scenario to counter trend. Okay, first one is just to dump this on Friday and pray. Uh, that I don't recommend that. Okay, um, I don't mind buying a dip and praying on a on an uptrend, but selling a rally in an uptrend would be terrible. Now we've hit our target here. You see this? That's the projected target for this week. So you could counter trend this down back to the central pivot. You have permission to consider it. It doesn't say it's going to do it, but if you were a bear and you wanted to bring it back down to this price, yes, you have permission to try. Doesn't mean you're going to succeed, but the idea is that whoever bought it last week, like they were supposed to, especially at that price, they're now supposed to take profit. You see this? So it's Monday morning. We hit the weekly target. They're supposed to be putting the money in the bank. So if these guys get out of their long positions, they're taking profit or they're hitting limit orders and the brokers are now entering sell positions to offset their long positions. So in a sense, they're selling. They were buying down here, but now they're selling, but they're just offsetting their trades. But nonetheless, there's less bulls and there's sellers, right? So if enough bulls get out, it'll come down through here. Well, imagine if 85% of all stop losses are within 30, uh, 30 pips of, of price. So once you, this drops 30 or 40 pips, you're going to start hitting stops, which then will make the candles redder. And then you're going to start attracting um, bears to actually sell, not offsetters, but actual insetters, if you will. And you can get this to cascade down. And so here we are Monday already at the target. New York hasn't even opened yet. So maybe by Wednesday or Thursday, we're way back here and, and these guys buy back in. But what they're thinking is kind of like me, right? Where I, I say to you on this four hour chart, oh, well, it should drop back here and then we should buy it again. Well, think of the person that's sitting on several hundred pips and they're like, yeah, I think it's going to drop from uh, 89 all the way down to 87 and a half. Well, that's 150 pips. They don't want to give that back. So they might as well get it. So they take their money now and then they buy it after it falls 150 pips. So if you know what they're thinking, then you can help them make their decisions. You can hunt their stops. You can counter trend it for a potential of 150 pips. Then you better get you out as well because these guys are going to get back in. So, yes, if that's what you're thinking, I'm not recommending it. But if that's what you're thinking, you by all means have permission to do it. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't cover Bitcoin. Well, Kevin says, uh, if I'm doing a naked chart, um, how do I start with, uh, um, this is probably the closest I'm going to get. How do I start my trading? Well, you say besides, uh, let's see, be what do you do besides support and resistance? Nothing. Okay. That's it. That's all there is. Okay. Now support and resistance tells you a lot of information. I use support and resistance of price. So I'll get rid of this 200 EMA in case it's distracting. I look at support and resistance of price, which, right? Which is, I'll look at this. That looks like that was resistance at one point, right? Okay. That kind of thing. I could say this, oops. That's it. Okay, I say that looks like it was interesting at some point. All right, I say that looks like interesting at some point. Okay, and I go through that, and I, that's just simply price. I'm only connecting price. Okay, you got that? 
And then I'll say, um, I'm interested in support and resistance, not of price, but of the market. So I'll use an indicator for that because I want it to measure the high and low and close of the market. So um, we can do it this way. Okay. And, all right. So what this is going to do is it's going to look for monthly pivots. It's going to calculate the high of last month. And then it's going to look at the low of last month. I'm not asking it to look at like what was the top and bottom. It's just going to look at, at we're defining a market. Last month, what did the market do? It's a very general question. It's going to look at the high and it's going to look at the low. And then I'm going to say, all right, market, where did the market close, right? Where did the market close? Because if it closed bullish, well, then this month might be bullish too, because that would be a trend. If the market closed bearish last month, in this case at the end of September, well, then maybe this month will continue to be bearish too. And if it closed in the middle, it, right? then it's neutral and maybe it's going to be neutral in the next few weeks as well. So all it's doing is looking at last month's high, last month's close, and where did September, or sorry, last month's high, last month's low, and then we, kept, we look at where September closed as sentiment, like a sentiment indicator, okay? Now, it's especially interesting if the market started bullish and ended bearish, because then in the near future, I could say, it should be very bearish, okay? So that's important, but I'm not looking at price, really. I'm looking at time. What was the high of September? What was the low of September? And where did the market close at the on the last second of September trading? Because I want to know sentiment. That's cool, right? So that is the market. What is the sentiment of the market? It's all calculated in the algorithm. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that, and that'll put some pretty colors on my uh, chart. And that's that. So, okay. So there's the low of last month. There's the high of last month, all right? And this is where we closed. So it closed very bullish. So you'll see the central pivot went from here to here. Okay. What did it what does this mean for August where the two central pivots are about the same? Look at the difference. It moved this month much for the October, but the September moved hardly anything. What was the difference? Well, not much happened in August. Isn't that interesting? There's the low of August, there's the high of August, not much happened, so therefore the central pivot barely moved. In fact, right? Yeah. It's not, ex right? But not unexpected in August. And now, look, we're, we're on the move. We're Oscar Mike. And also, that's not unexpected. Okay. So, what I'm teaching uh, swing traders is that you can front run this and get long if you're a bull for October. It's easy, easy to calculate. So, so you now you're, you're so the let's go all the way full circle. The question was, what do I do if I have a naked chart and besides support and resistance, what would I look at? Well, the only thing I look at is support and resistance. That's what to me. That's all technical analysis is. So. 
I buy at support, I sell at resistance, and nothing else exists. So I have two things that I use in technical analysis. Ready? Support and resistance of price and support and resistance of the market. Every, every indicator I use, and I don't need any particular indicator, but every indicator I use tells me support and resistance of either price or of, right, or of market. Okay, that's all there is, in my humble opinion. <clears throat> so, we are hosted by the fabulous website Forex.today. Please subscribe to the Forex.today YouTube channel because when I hit start streaming, you're notified and it saves you a ton of time because it brings you directly to um, the webpage or the sorry, the YouTube page that is streaming um, the webinar live. So if you subscribe, it says, hey, bing, the webinar started, click here to join. Nice and easy. And that's all done by YouTube. So you're not giving me your contact information or it's all private. It's all between you and YouTube. Uh, so please subscribe. And if you could, could you give us a, a like? I'd appreciate that. Let's do the commitment. Well, we did that last week. Uh, let's look at the calendar. Kevin says it seems so simple. Yeah, well, I'm not that smart, so I need something simple. I'm like the dumbest guy at Harvard. I walk around, and I'm like, oh, my God, they're going to figure it out that they let me in, and probably a big mistake. They're like, oh, what? All right, fat finger. They went to hit reject, and what? Fat finger, they let me in by accident. So anyways, uh, yeah, so I need I need something simple. Okay. All right. Let's go. Should we do look at medium stuff? Nah. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. RBA interest rate decision. Cool. Wayne is right. Yes, I worked at NASA for a couple of summers. Yes, I did dock the space shuttle at the International Space Station. Only by simulation, though. I didn't actually go into space. But I was working at NASA on NASA property in a NASA study, and they chose me to be the commander of the space shuttle, all of which is true. I grew up in rural Canada in the prairies of Saskatchewan, right? And then I said, I don't belong here. I'm not a farmer. I don't, right? All this kind of stuff. I need to get out. I want to be a businessman. So five years later, I'm in New York City. I'm running a corporation of 3,000 people. I'm on the board of directors with George Soros and the vice president of uh, General Electric and the vice president of Arthur Anderson and someone from the United Nations. And so, yeah, so in five years, I went from Saskatchewan to New York. So I've done, done some things. Then I went to the Silicon Valley. And a, a few years after trying to make it big in this thing called the Internet in the dot-com boom, uh, I was featured in the, the hot startups, the hot 100, um, the hot, hot one, what was it called? Hot 100 uh, issue of Inc. Magazine. Stuff like that. Pretty neat stuff. But... Uh, I'm just a humble currency trader now. Those are my big days. All right, 
so going back to this, uh, RBA interest rate decision. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's going to move the Aussie, right? The thing is, are they going to lift? Well, typically in a healthy world, the RBA has an interest rate significantly higher than the Fed. And now the Fed is significantly higher than the Aussie. So to me, it's quite remarkable to think that you could be like short Aussie dollar as a carry trade. <laughs> um, right. Oh, uh, Bongi Kashi, I'm, I'm, I'm wasting your time. I apologize. I'm responding to people in the chat, by the way. Okay, so this is important, right? Are they going to raise? Well, I suggest you go to the RBA website. So I think about a month ago, I downloaded uh, the actual um, report written by the RBA, they gave an outlook of their economy and uh, an overview of their th thought process for their monetary policy. And I read it to you guys. It took me literally about one minute to download it and to go through the, the statement and pull out the information we needed. Okay. Okay. But anyways, I apologize, Makama. You're such a busy person. Big things going on. I know you need my my uh, opinion as fast as possible. Uh, Friday, non-farm payrolls, my 150th month. Looking forward to that. Everything should be coming out on trend, obviously. Now, this one's a nice one because we also have, you know, because it's often happens, but not always. But uh, we often have uh, the uh, CAD jobs as well. So with all this interest going on, I think uh, CAD could really move. So you want to be watching CAD and Aussie this week. Okay. Right. I mean, I don't know. Uh, advice. Well. All I can tell you is, you know, in the next 48 hours, we're, go we're going to have some volatility. So it nothing should change from the RBA. I'm hoping maybe they say things are not getting worse, right? And if they say something like that, it would be more positive for the uh, to the valuation of the uh, Aussie right of the Aussie dollar so I'm hoping that the Aussie dollar is bottoming out and I hope they say something kind of towards that so if you happen to be a bull on Aussie dollar then you can set that kind of stuff up and start looking for support waiting that news will come out if it if it comes out and it doesn't support the Aussie dollar you can back off but by then have stops right in place or they do say things that are more positive than negative, and then maybe it does go your way. So one of the things you, you could do is enter your trade now. It's Monday, right? Get your stop to break even and hope, hope it's positive, right? Yeah, maybe, John. Okay. So you have to decide also, do you want to trade Aussie versus dollar or Aussie versus yen? So this is sort of a relative strength exercise. You could say, if you are bullish on Aussie dollar, you're not expecting the RBA to raise interest rates, but you're hoping they say something positive. Therefore, you want to buy Aussie. You might say, so I will buy Aussie yen. 
for example, I'm not saying, but that you may be more bearish on the yen than the U.S. dollar. Now, if you're a bear on the Aussie, then you're going to say, look, there's no way the RBA is going to raise interest rates. In fact, they're going to come out and say there's no way we're even thinking about raising our uh, interest rates. In that case, that would be very bearish for the Aussie. Well, you wouldn't want to sell Aussie yen, but you might be interested in selling Aussie dollar or Aussie Swiss franc or Aussie CAD, or I guess buy CAD Aussie. Uh, but you want to think about whether you're a bull or a bear on the Aussie and what you'd be, if you're a bear on Aussie, what, what would you want to like sell the Aussie for to buy? What would you buy, right? Or the opposite, if you're bullish on Aussie, what would you want to sell? And think about the other side of your trade. <clears throat> yeah, gold is on a tear. Okay. Yeah, isn't it supposed to be? Okay, I, I, I'll address this and we'll wrap it up for today. All right, cool. Check this out. If you're a bull, this is the exact price you're supposed to buy. If you're a bear, this is a, the exact price you're supposed to be selling. Uh, well, what we identified last Friday, right? So we were here. We said, let it rally up and then dump it. Bulls, we're supposed to buy it here or here. You understand that this is just a, a bullish swing trade. Now, you're, you're buying back into this old resistance. I'm not saying it's good, but it's really obvious that a bull should be buying either this price or a bull should be buying this price. Okay? So the big question is, ask yourself if you don't understand. Yeah, now, now it's pound moving up. If you don't understand why then you should investigate like pivot points, for example. Oh, we got an Irish uh, compromise, huh? Cool. That's, that's a fundamental play. Remember, often I say news is not fundamental. That, that would be fundamental news because it does change the economy. Okay. So make, make sure you identify things like your resistance levels and your support levels. Don't get sloppy and lazy now because you're like, this guy is falling, this guy is falling, right? Um, plan out your trades, guys. Make sure you know where your pivots are. Do you really want to sell a U.S. dollar? Well, you might. <clears throat> okay, you can see this is... Right? Maybe you can use that as support. This was more obvious a while ago. This is still technically bearish, so it's a, a riskier trade to be thinking about. Okay? But you might work your way up, down, up, and then use it as support. So ideally, you find something that's more pro, you know, pound. So like, here's one. So now you can see you're on a much more free and clear plan, but it's already out of position. Okay. So anyways, just because this came out doesn't mean you should be reacting. You're supposed to be planning. Make sure you don't chase price because some unexpected news came out, right? Yeah, but it's also the exact price, John, and that's why you should buy where you're supposed to buy if you're a bull this, or sell where you're supposed to sell if you're a bear. Very often this news works out for you, okay? Remember, the dollar selling off is a good thing, that means things are good. That means the world is right as rain. You want a weak reserve currency because it means Americans are buying, buying stuff from everybody else, and that makes a healthy world. So anyways, guys, thank you again for your hour and a half with me. 
Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for being a client to Trader's Way. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for leaving comments. And if you'd like me to, to cover something different tomorrow, um, leave that in the comments after the recording is published. So anyways, take care.